just arriving, for Britain to reconsider its membership of the European Court of Human Rights. What say you? Well, that's a political matter. I, I'm quite pleased that we've got it because I think it's absolutely right that, uh, you know, uh, citizens can avail themselves of independent and external courts if needs be. But let me just clarify one thing. Um, what the European Court of Human Rights did yesterday was to grant injunctive relief to three individuals. Now, what they order is not binding on the British government. So the Home Secretary said, well, I'm going to ignore that, and she's entitled to do so. And what they then did, their lawyers then went to the Court of Appeal, the UK Court of Appeal, who granted injunctive relief. So it was, a, it was UK lawyers who did that. And in my own case, my own case didn't get anywhere near the European Court of Human Rights. I got injunction in the upper tribunal, another UK court. Richard Tice, you know, Jackie McKenzie makes an important point of distinction there about who ultimately has made the ruling that keeps the plane on the ground. For many people, this will feel like a legal morass. They're not interested in legal niceties. They're interested in the fact that 400 people arrived by boat uh, on the Channel coastline yesterday. And today we're hearing about Channel migrants arriving on the Devon coast, a doubling of migrants each year, if not a tripling, and an imminent political problem. But that's right. And the reality is that there are no good options here, Colin. Uh, it's trying to uh, find uh, the least worst option to act as a deterrent to stop anybody leaving the shores of France. And because the government's tried but failed to reach an appropriate accommodation for France, uh, they've, they've moved towards the Rwanda policy. I think the real point about the European Court of Human Rights is that the government had uh, secured the approval of not one, not two, but three levels of the United Kingdom judicial system. We're an independent, sovereign nation. And I think people find it utterly bewildering and appalling that a foreign court, very often um, staffed by a non-legally qualified judge, very often demonstrating political bias, should essentially overrule our own domestic court system. And, you know, who are we? Are we an independent nation or not? But, so I think many people will be saying this is unacceptable. From my perspective, from our party's perspective, I think this reinforces we have no choice. If we want to be able to control our own laws and our own borders, we're left with no choice but to withdraw from the European Court of Human Rights, from the European Convention on Human Rights, and, uh, you know, to essentially say, look, we don't actually need lessons from other people about human rights. We invented them virtually 70 years ago, and we've got a very strong and proud uh, track record on human rights, on welcoming uh, refugees and immigration, and long may that continue. But we have to be in charge of this. And the reality is, the more you have illegal migration coming across those waters, huge dangers, the huge profiteering going on, then the harder it is for us to be able to accommodate legal, lawful asylum seekers, yep. refugees, and, uh, and lawful immigration. And that's to the detriment of our country.